So hello everyone and welcome to this winter semester's first online lecture in English, which is uh, part of the University of Oldenburg's Department of History's lecture series on games and history. My name is uh, Lukas Hases. I'm postdoctoral researcher and lecturer in early modern history at the University of Oldenburg, Germany, and I'm also the research coordinator of the British German Academy project, the Prize Papers project, which is dedicated to the digitization of and research on the Prize Papers collection at the National Archives of the UK. This collection is a vast and unique trove of records and objects confiscated by British privateers and naval vessels between 1652 and 1817, a period of time during which the seizure of sh uh, ships was still a legitimate form of tactical warfare, not only for the English, but also for the French. As a matter of fact, the Prize Papers collection holds many surviving records that originated uh, in the Caribbean, with a considerable amount of these stemming from various ships that were captured after sailing from the island of Saint-Domingue, French colonial Haiti, which might also include documents dating from the time of the Haitian uh, Revolution. Therefore, in both of my academic roles, um, as a lecturer as well as a researcher, I'm not only truly grateful, but also feel very, very privileged to have the pleasure of welcoming Professor Dr. Alyssa goldstein Seppinwell today, who holds the positions of Professor and Director of Graduate Students at the History Department of the California State University, San Marcos, in the United States. Her latest book, Slave Revolt on Screen, The Haitian Revolution in Film and Video Games, published by the University Press of Mississippi in 2021, analyzes how movies and digital games from around the world have been depicting slave revolts uh, while focusing on the Haitian Revolution, which lasted from 1791 until 1804. This historic event, the first successful revolution by enslaved people in modern history, sent shockwaves throughout the Atlantic world. The book received the honorable mention of the Haitian Studies Association Book Prize. Alyssa's previous works include a biography of Abbé Grégoire, uh, a priest involved in the French Revolution, and the book The French Revolution, The Making of Modern Universalism. Uh, Haitian History, New Perspective, uh, 2012, and numerous articles on French as well as Haitian history. As a historian of the early modern period and as a lecturer informing on and teaching about the importance that historical video games possess in the context of academic and formal education, as well as regarding the cultural remembrance, I would like to add that Alyssa is conducting truly pioneering uh, research, which is helping us reshape the way we think about the historical period and its depiction in modern video games. I can only repeat uh, myself by saying that I'm grateful for you having agreed to speak about your book during uh, this series of lectures. And I would also like to seize the opportunity to as address our audience here by saying that the great interest shown by students and members of the interested public deeply pleases me. With that being said, I would like to uh, end my introduction and hand over to you, Alyssa. Thank you for uh, uh, being here today and the stage is yours. Dankeschön, Professor Dr. Hassis. Um, guten Abend. Mein Deutsch ist nicht mehr so gut, also ich werde auf Englisch sprechen, which I think will be charitable for all of you, so you don't have to listen to my German. Um, I'm excited to be here with all of you today. It's still morning for me. Um, and I thank Professor Hassis so much for the invitation. So I was asked to give an overview of my book, Slave Revolt on Screen. Let me just open my PowerPoint. All right, and let's see if I can also do it as a slideshow, if the technology will let me. There we go. Um, so I will talk a little about my book, Slave Revolt on Screen, and how it is that I came to study video games as a historian of Haiti. So I'll tell you a little bit, let's see, move this here, a little bit about myself and how I came to study the subject, then an overview of my book and the game section in particular, and then I'll take your questions. So how did I get here? As Professor Hasse said, I'm a scholar of 18th century France and of Haiti. My earlier work was more traditional intellectual history, the history of a famous man, the French revolutionary priest Abbé Grégoire, but the book was still unconventional in that I was not writing about a great man just to celebrate him, but also using him to think about the way that modern nation states think about cultural difference and who gets to count as a citizen, which I know is an issue that's important in Germany also. I used Gregoire to compare how the French Revolution treated and gave citizenship to different minoritized groups in France, whether Jews, people of color, women, 
or at linguistic minorities. <clears throat> I hope I'm speaking slowly enough. I tend to speak very quickly in English. Good. So the book also looked at Gregoire's relationships with the first leaders of independent Haiti. My second book then, Haitian History, New Perspectives, went deeper into Haitian history from the French colonial period to the 21st century. I wrote it after the earthquake when I saw ill-informed commentators on TV just saying Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, but they couldn't say why that was. They didn't know this history. So my book introduces audiences to Haitian history and gives a deeper perspective on how Haiti has come to be so impoverished and what was the role of foreign countries from France to the U.S. to Germany in ensuring that it would stay that way. Germany had an important influence and, and held a lot of debts for Haiti in the early 20th century. So since then, I've continued to write about the difference between what actually happened in the Haitian Revolution and the amnesia or distortions about it. Professor Hassas gave you a little summary of the Haitian Revolution, but since you're not all Haitianists, I'm going to give you just a little more so you understand my work on video games. So the Haitian Revolution happened 1791 to 1804. It was long forgotten outside of Haiti, but it was one of the major events of modern world history. It took place in the French colony of Saint-Domingue and was the first uprising of enslaved Africans in the New World to succeed in creating an independent state. So Saint-Domingue was the western part of Hispaniola and the Caribbean, which the French had seized in the 17th century and it became the New World's richest colony. But that prosperity came at a price. The colony's wealth depended on the labor of kidnapped Africans transported across the Atlantic to work on plantations. Saint-Domingue slave owners were among the most brutal in the Americas. By forcing enslaved people to do backbreaking labor, they gained enormous profits. Saint-Domingue was the Atlantic world's largest producer of sugar and coffee. So as the scholar Carolyn Fick has noted, slave resistance took diverse forms in the colony from marinage, meaning running away, to suicide. Since the chances of armed rebellion were slight and attempts at open resistance were met with unspeakable brutality. The revolution ended with Haitian's defeat of Napoleon's armies and a declaration of Haitian independence in 1804. So Haitians were now free. They had overthrown slavery. And it was tremendously inspiring to enslaved people around the Atlantic who heard about this revolution through a whisper network. And for them, it served as a beacon of hope that slavery could end one day and that they too could be free. Um, but for enslavers in the US, Europe, Latin America, and then other Europeans in other countries, the revolution conjured up a terrifying alternate universe in which whites could lose their property and their lives. And this event was so horrifying to slave owners and other white Europeans and Americans at this time that there was an effort to blot out the memory of Haiti, to silence this past. And there are scholars in Germany who also work on this topic like Hans-Jürgen Lucebrink. So I'm interested in what the Haitian anthropologist Michel Rolf Trouillot called the gap between history and memory, between what happened and what is said to have happened. So for a long time, the French ignored their history of slavery, and many French people didn't even realize that Haiti was ever part of France. Even the French, French president Jacques Chirac said in 2000, oh, Haiti was never a French colony, which is insane. Um, <clears throat> so my interest in the erasure of the Haitian Revolution in curriculum, in pop culture, in public memory, led me to this new work. So my newest book again is Slave Revolt on Screen from the University Press of Mississippi. Now, what I just told you about the Haitian Revolution, some of you might know but others might be hearing about it for the first time 
And if that's the case, that begs the question, why is there less, okay, so I've got some little things on the book, but why is there less awareness about the Haitian Revolution than other revolutions of the same era? In Trouillot's words, why has the French Revolution been silenced? Why has there been this willful forgetting? So as part of thinking about why the revolution is so obscure and why its history has been silenced, I realized that its absence on screen was one reason. As scholars of film and history have noted, the general public often learns history more from Hollywood than from historiography. So in the book, I ask a series of questions as I examine the world of cinema as well as that of games. First, why hasn't Hollywood made an epic film about the Haitian Revolution when there are many, many films on other revolutions? What is it about this story that has seemed radioactive, toxic, scary to Hollywood funders? Then I found films about the Haitian Revolution that did exist. It took some sleuthing, but then when I found them, I wanted to consider how did foreign directors, meaning non-Haitian, portray the Haitian Revolution? And this grows out of Trouillot's analysis of how foreign historians often distort the Haitian Revolution, even when they talk about it. And this is what he calls banalization. So when I saw the flaws of the few existing European and US films on the Haitian Revolution, that led me in two other directions. One was, were there films by Haitians about the revolution? As a scholar, I never like, and a scholar starting in European history, I was trained in early modern France, I never like to look just at what white Europeans say about colonized peoples. That was an important area of study. We call it representation studies, but it's limited because it still treats colonized people as objects and prioritize what Europeans were thinking. So I wanted to find how Haitians represented their own history and themselves. But this was much more challenging to find. Once I did this and had obtained films by Haitians, and I can tell you more about that in the questions if you'd like to know, then I was able to ask, how <clears throat> did Haitians' films about their own revolution look different from those of foreigners? What did it look like when they got to narrate their own story of their own revolution and celebrate their ancestors, even if these films were shorter and thus cheaper than Hollywood films? And then the larger issue that my book looks at um, which I think is a really important issue. Who gets to decide what to fund and what gets projected on screens worldwide? I point to how the legacy of uh, the economic legacies of colonialism and slavery have shaped who has film capital now, and of course, game capital, and how this warps what the public knows about history. So if history is being presented to the public on screen, who gets to decide what it looks like and gets to select the stories that are told? And of course, this tends to be people from the wealthy nations and not um, the formerly enslaved nations like Haiti. Then finally, the second direction was that I discovered that there have been several recent video games on slave revolt in colonial Haiti, which puzzled me as someone who's not a player myself. So I asked, why do they exist? How did this come to be a thing? Why have video game producers been willing to fund games on slave revolt in Haiti when film producers won't? And how good is the history of the games? And what criteria should historians use to analyze them? Um, and I talk about this more. You can look this up later if you'd like in this little piece that I wrote, downloadable context, why a historian of Haiti came to study video games. So I look in my book at more famous modern games, and by modern I mean 21st century, like Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry and Liberation, as well as an older set 
of late 20th century games from the 1980s that I found that were made by Caribbean developers themselves. So how do I decide if a game is accurate as a historian? Um, following the film theorist and historian Robert Rosenstone, I don't simply look to see if a game has errors and then say wrong, 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 this game is inaccurate. <clears throat> Instead, I consider whether games on Haiti and slavery portray enslaved Haitian revolutionaries in the same flawed way as most foreign films on the revolution, or if they offer more subaltern perspectives, perspectives more from Haitians. So I consider whether resistance by enslaved peoples uh, is celebrated or ignored, whether violence by enslavers is highlighted or minimized, and whether games on slavery dehumanize enslaved people or lead players to empathize with them. Um, and I also analyzed other games on Atlantic slavery, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to better contextualize the games on Haiti. So that is an overview of themes in the book. I'm going to show you some screenshots before we go because it's strange just to talk about a visual medium. And then if we have time, I have two short clips. So here's Adewale in Freedom Cry, the game from Ubisoft. Um, he himself was a formerly enslaved person um, from Trinidad who arrives in Saint-Domingue and starts to try to free people. Here's just the kind of cover of the game. Um, here is Bastien Joseph, who I discuss more in my book. She is a sex worker, which is common in video games, but she uses her agency to battle against um, the white power structure on the island and to try to feed information to those who are resisting. Um, then I have some pictures from the games from the 1980s, Freedom, Rebels in the Darkness, and Mawillow. So these games were created by a team of two. Um, the main developer was Muriel Tremy, a pioneering French video game designer from Martinique. Um, Elijah Lee, who's a blogger, has done the research to confirm that she was the world's first black woman video game designer. And she designed this game, I was delighted to discover, with one of my favorite novelists, Patrick Chamoiseau, um, who in novels like Texaco has explored the legacy of slavery today. And it turns out he had also worked on these video games with Muriel Tremi, which none of the scholarship on his work had discussed. So this was the title screen for Freedom Rebels in the Darkness, which came out um, I want to say in French, English, and German. Uh, it might be Mawillo that was in German and not both games, <clears throat> but there are a lot of German reviews. Okay, so in Freedom Rebels in the Darkness, you have four avatar choices long before Ubisoft would get publicity for its game Assassin's Creed Liberation for having a black female protagonist in Freedom Rebels in the Darkness. You could play, um, and Mockendal was a, a real um, leader of um, slave rebellion in Haiti in the 18th century. Um, here is Sham Oiseau um, embedded into the game as an avatar, um, as an enslaved person reluctant to revolt. Um, and you have strategies for resistance in the game, climbing, setting the plantation on fire, or picking the lock of a building. Um, and the thing in Freedom Rebels in the Darkness that you are trying to escape from are dogs. Um, and I could talk more in the questions if you'd like about how this differs from Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry and is in fact more realistic. All right, so I can, let's see, I can also then show you the two clips if there's time for that. All right, so I'm going to now share here in Chrome and I'm going to be showing you two clips from Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, this game by Ubisoft. And in this first clip, you are going to see, um, let me just back out for a second. So I'll tell you that in the films that I had studied, there were very few films, as I mentioned, that were made in France or in Hollywood. And the biggest budget film is this French biopic on Toussaint Louverture, the leader of the Haitian Revolution. Um, and this French 
um, a mini series about him really whitewashed slavery. It portrayed enslavers as nice and friendly, that maybe there were some outlying extreme instances of violence, but otherwise slavery was just like being a peasant and it was really hot headed, ungrateful, savage Haitians who decided to revolt. So those are the films I'd been analyzing where the Haitian revolution was distorted by non Haitians. And then I discovered this video game, which was coming out in 2013. So now let me bring you back to the cutscenes. And here Adewale is been shipwrecked and he's waking up on San Domingue. And you will see what he sees right away as soon as he arrives on the island. to offer but thanks nothing else is needed as a boy i fled the same fate why would you risk recapture all right <clears throat> so in that clip you see when he arrives at the island he immediately sees a slave auction and he sees an overseer trying to rape a woman and he rescues her from it i'm going to switch now to another clip later in the game when um, Adewale has found Bastien Joseph, and he's found the leader of the Maroon resistance, whose name is Augustin, and they have tried to save the people on a slave ship. They've tried to rescue them, but the, um, the French colonizers chose instead to allow oh, the ship to go down and to lose all of their cargo, rather cargo, rather than to allow people to become free. So now you'll see them, them mourning this. Gouverneur de Fayette. I thought I understood his indifference. I did not anticipate the extent of his heartlessness. You tried to warn me. We are all guilty. A governor will pay with his own life. My creed demands that I see to it. Revenge is called comfort. Once the fire is gone. Another tyrant will take his place. His death must give this generation of warriors hope. They must not abandon the goal of independence. And the death of these souls? So, they leave me life. We will always mourn them. All right, so that gives you a very quick overview of the game. Professor Hassis had originally asked me to speak for 15 minutes, so I was just giving you a real taste and not going in deep, but this game shocked me when I saw it because it was so different as a game made in North America by non-Haitians in the way that it centered Haitians. There was no white hero who was saving them, which has been a constant trope when films have been made in North America or in France about this story. And the funders at Ubisoft went ahead and made it and anticipated correctly that there would be a market. So I will leave things there. I thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you so much. Uh, also very moving, these clips. So uh, I have to say. 
uh, in this blog article, which we actually read for tomorrow's session here uh, at the university, you very aptly write that historical games will not disappear just because historians dismiss them. And I find this very apt, this, uh, this, uh, this quote, because we need to appreciate uh, games as important cultural assets um, at the university, in schools, and uh, in research. And your lecture today um, showed this very well and uh, is an excellent example of how to do it right and how we can and also should raise interest in this topic. And I'm sure that there are um, questions from the students. And uh, yes, there's already one question, which is good. But before this, um, I'm going to stop the recording. So thank you again.